An apology to men in response to shoe on head. This is the... For those not familiar, men are like, um, how I describe them. They're like normal people. Right off the bat, this video has a really weird vibe. I'm not gonna lie. Good idea. People, but usually they're bigger and usually they're hairier and they don't typically smell as good. It's hard to describe them because they're quite variable. Some of them are Chinese, some of them are dentists. They're all different. You just, you know one when... Okay, that's a really weird vibe. That's a really weird vibe. You see one. But, it, but, it, but it, 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 it's, it's not important what men are. What's important is that it's been brought to my attention. Oh. I thought it wasn't important what they are, but it's important what they aren't. Okay, I'm just gonna... The game is distracting me. I'm just gonna turn it off. I thought I would be playing a game while watching this, but no. I'm gonna dedicate my full attention to this video. No distractions. I have, I already have problems concentrating as it is. I need to. Oh my God! I need to take that. HRT. Some of my words have been deeply offensive to men hormone, and people within the larger male fandom. And that was hormone replacement therapy. One moment, please. I I'm gonna need the full screen for this. I'm gonna show you how to trans yourself. This is an instruction video. This is an instruction video on how to trans yourself. I don't have water. I'm going to have to do with that or something. It's slime is taking the critic's position. I like it. I share the kind of humor. I don't know. It's a weird vibe. It's a weird vibe. You should be wholesome like me. Use my type of humor. Plus, as far as I'm aware, Thought Slime has never apologized for the whole sex cult thing. Oh my god. Also, subscribe and donate. It's one of my big ambitious plans. It was never my intention. I would never want to mock people who I think could defeat me in a fight. Besides, some of my best friends are men. I have men in my family. I'm even half man on my father's side. I have a deep and abiding respect for men and male culture. I've participated in many of their rituals, gone to their places of worship, ate their traditional foods. I will now give the traditional male apology for any offense my thoughtless words may have caused. I'm sorry, bro. I love you, bro. Be good, bro. Now to back up and explain myself a little bit, in a video about the deeply embarrassing Nick Adams and the deeply embarrassing way he tries to portray himself as an alpha male by like, stepping on candies and going Alpha to food restaurants. Until M&M's rectify this grave wrong what? by giving us all male M&M's, this boycott will remain. M&M's? Wait, that sounds so gay. I'm sorry. All I want is male M&M's? Oh, sorry. <laughs> Whoops. You like watching me. You don't care about the screen. This is exactly why I am where I am when it comes to the number of viewers. You see, when you used to present as a male to society, what are some issues you felt affected and how it changed? Uh, believe it or not, believe it or not, when I presented Guy, I sort of still do to many people. Let's just let's just get this out of the way. To many people, I still present men. That's that's one thing. To 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 a lot of society, I still present as men. So that's that's just gonna be my first. Second of all, when I worked, I have a weird, even when sort of boy moding officially with a beard or a facial thing i have a have a weird i have a weird effect on men even when i didn't live as a girl if that makes sense i make men want to take care of me 
and that was before presenting like this. Like I once was in a car with a colleague in the corporate work, and he just randomly looked at me and was and was like, "You know, looking at you makes me want to take care of you." I was like, "Okay, thanks, I guess." Also, one other person uh, told me. I like taking you to this place. It makes me feel like I'm taking care of you. I'm like, okay, thanks. So that's that's my effect on men. So yes, that's what happened. Even like... Uh, when... Super boy moding. Take care of. As much as I presented differently, the way I acted is basically very similar to how I act now. My mannerisms, etc., were very similar to how I act now. There were not, it wasn't much different, you know? And that makes sense. Like, I have not sort of transformed my whole demeanor. In any way. Does that make sense? Awkward at least. Still I guess it's not an objectifying way or a demeaning way. It's not necessarily a bad thing. Oh yeah. And also one day in the office. And uh, again in that corporate job. Um, me and the same colleague. Who has I think two kids now. Oh my god weirded out the whole office because um, he'd usually drive me to the subway after work and we talk about strange things like what would we do if the car fell into the river and we talked about the protocol what you should do that you shouldn't just open the window right away because the pressure will crush the car so we have to wait for that. That's a whole other story. How to act when your car falls into the river. So we've prepared for that eventuality. How we'd survive if the car fell into the river. But. Uh, I think it was on Valentine's or something. I don't, I'm not sure. Like uh, we were finishing work. And the colleague was like. Hey want to. Um, want to drive by a restaurant while we, you know, go? It's going to be romantic. No. Um, want to dr wanna go by a restaurant while we, while we go? And I was sure it's going to be very romantic. And the whole office was like, you know, that was funny. That was a funny little moment. Man, look up to Lucy and go. I must protect that smile. I wasn't smiling much, actually, at that job. I wasn't smiling much at all. So I'm not sure about protecting the smile since I've not been smiling much at that job. The opposite. I've been doing the opposite of smiling at that job. Ooh. In multiple of my jobs, people have kind of become mat uh, maternal towards me, which is interesting. I guess I relate a little bit both ways. I think a lot of people, I think a lot about people I meet and wonder what they're up to and hoping they're okay. Huh. Okay, let's continue. Let us continue. Put down the woke M&Ms. I said the following. The question of whether or not the hashtag online left is enough to appeal to hashtag men has become the question du jour. And like, that's a very misguided question, in my opinion. Broadly speaking, the goal of the left should be to spread power to the most people possible. And so it should always be kind of harder to get people who already have unfair amounts of power on board. That's inconvenient, but it's also kind of unavoidable without diluting the goals we seek to achieve. It is never in the self-interest of the powerful to aid the powerless. That's the reason there are powerful and powerless people in the first place. And men, by and large, are more powerful than women. There are, of course, exceptions. There are intersections of other forms of oppression that can make individual people's stories different than the general trend. But, like, men have...
Okay. Most of the money authority. I really dislike that phrasing though. And do most of the murdering and assaulting, often to not men. In virtually any circumstance where a man has a shitty time in life, if that man were a woman, they would be having a worse time because they'd have all of their regular problems plus some new woman problems. I can see now the mistake I made, which is that I took it for granted that my words would be understood in the context I said them in. Right? Does it? Don't they feel a little bit bigger here? Maybe they're, maybe they're just closer to camera. Rather than used outside of that context to give the illusion I had said something different than what I said. And for that, I, I apologize. I do not like the aesthetics, by the way. I don't, I don't know. They're a bit off-putting. But I guess it's like a sewer aesthetic, so I guess that's... Why would you choose an off-putting aesthetic on purpose? I really like the sect that men have the power phrasing because it's more like the people with power are more likely to be men. Yeah, men are a very broad grouping. At the very least, we should push to get like an amount of them on the side of leftists. We can demographically afford to push all men aside. As the majority of men have essentially no real power. I don't like this aesthetic so much. Apologize. Never in a million years I, I, would I have thought that simply saying the most banal, obvious, and self-evident facts about the reproduction of patriarchy. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles influenced Lucy. Well, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles didn't turn me off, so I guess there's been a... I guess mistakes were made along the way because I used to watch Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and that that's, that's not quite the feeling that they invoked in me. Industrial zones. I mean, I don't know. This turns me off more than a real sewer, which is a real achievement. I don't know why. This actually turns me off more than a genuinely real sewer. I don't know how this was accomplished, but it was accomplished. I can look at a regular sewer and not be as turned off as, as, as by looking at this. It looks like a s giant snot dripping out of the barred hole. Sometimes I'm not sure if the fears I have from being female are legitimate or if they're paranoid. Does anyone else kind of always scope out existing scene building or prefer for being cornered? To group men into a single group is a bad idea as a race and ethnicity and nationality can all play a different part into how one thinks. I have a... I have... Okay, I have no issue with a fake slime sewer. I have issues with this particular slime sewer. In Poland, you used to get mugged a lot. When I was young, you used to get mugged a lot. So, caution was always advised because a band of thugs could sort of pro approach you at any point and just mug you or something. That used to be my childhood experience. Melted jaw. He could be taken as evidence of a supposed demonization of men and manhood, particularly because the whole fucking video, like the whole fucking thing, was about how insincere this type of performative masculinity is, how it does not represent men realistically and holds them to standards that are both impossible. The 90s were wild in Poland and Hungary. Yeah, just. It was so risky to go out the street because there were those groups patrolling of thugs that could just approach you and, can I borrow some money? And of course, borrow did not really mean borrow, if you catch my drift. Poland has gotten so much safer, people don't realize. People really underestimate just how, how much safer Poland has gotten, in that regard at least. And, this is important, deeply stupid. But then, 
some very concerned people reached out with some gentle criticism, some suggestions like that I should kill myself, uh, more people than the normal amount that tell me to kill myself, um, and a lot of people complaining that I hate men and also for some reason white people, which I don't feel is related, but okay, I'll work on that too, I guess. And, and I didn't want to admit it at the time. See, I wasn't told to end myself. I was just told that I'm a creature. I am as the creature. And I thought, you know, what, what's probably happened here is that some chud must have talked about me in a video. Like, some chud didn't like a thing I said. And Mr. Cool Ideas. So thought some hates men. Let's kill him. 481k views five days ago. Oh my god, Thought Slime has 294k subscribers. I just, I cannot believe this. And they showed it to their chud audience to get them mad at me about it. But what happened next shook me to my core. Because it turns out it wasn't a chud that talked about me in a video. It was Zanderhal. No else. It was Shoe on Head. That whole thing is about Shoe on Head. It was shoe on head. Okay, now I get it. One day, one day a guy stepped to me. This was around 2000 and told if I don't give him money, he will punch me. This was in Budapest Main Square and how people would not help me. Plus my classes were worth more than my money. Like, like I lived in the ne near the center of Warsaw. So yeah, people approached you in the city center with this kind of crap. And they would say, hey, I got a knife under my coat. And if you don't give me money, I'm going to stab you or something. That was a thing. That was genuinely a thing. Plus. Plus. At least one time, they didn't tell me they would punch me. They did punch me on the face. And then ask me for money. And my phone, which I didn't have at that time. I didn't have a phone back then. I don't know if I'd be feeling scared if I'm walking the street because there's a lot of weirdos and radicals here. You'd be seeing junkies acting erratic. Oh. I like 50 Hungarian uh, foreign that is less than a dollar. And I said I need some, so I gave him 20 and keep the 30. He said 30, and I did that. Um, I was once saved by a person I was walking with because I had a lot of money in one pocket. You know, a lot of money at the time. It was a lot of money for me back then. It was like $50. Right? $50, I guess that's not a small amount of money. And in the other pocket, I had like five, ten dollars $10. So the thugs approached us and were like, give me money. So I gave them the 5 to $10 while still having the $50 in my other pocket. And the person that was with me was like, because they were, they were like, do you have any more money? And the person that was with me was like, yes, you're not getting that thing you wanted anymore, you know? And when they heard that, they concluded that they didn't have any more money and just left. And I saved that $50 that I had in my other pocket. <sighs> Those were so, such weird times. As far as I know, that's not a thing anymore. Thank goodness. It was shoe on head. Bah, bah, what? Bah. Well, she, it, well, she didn't really talk about me so much as she showed like a clip of me in passing in a video. And that was why suddenly my feed sucked more for a little so while. So why do you need to make a 50 minutes video about being mentioned in passing? I don't, oh. okay, why? Why would you do this to yourself? Wait, where's the, because you've been through a lot. <laughs> I mean, I'm from Poland. Everybody from Poland 
has been through something. Video is not about that. It is an excuse to talk about the issue. Hence, I like the video. Okay, let's watch it. Maybe it's good. Well, until they got bored. And it confused me. It confused my delicate little brain. Huh? So wait, you've watched it then, Carasso. Time is baiting people with the drama content, but redirects stuff to... Okay. I would understand if some chud made a video about me, but true on it is, of course, no right-wing culture warrior. Now, I'll grant you. She once was. She was once an anti-feminist crusader in the meme wars. She rubbed shoulders and hobnobbed with all sorts of anti-SJW alt-right adjacent figureheads and white supremacist terrorists back then. But in time, the scales fell from her eyes like Paul on the road to Damascus. And now she's a bona fide, real, honest-to-God, no fool and leftist. She said so. Of course, those old videos are still there. You know, she's not running from her past. And, and of course, they're still monetized. Like, she's still benefiting from her past but 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 but, 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 but when people come to our side it's cause for celebration they should be welcomed and given leadership positions that's called solidarity that's a good question i wonder if you have like one billion year old videos if if they're monetized do they still earn a lot of money i just i just can't think i just can't feel that they probably don't i consider sure right winger yeah that's probably fair that's probably fair to consider her that People can change. People can change without meaningfully changing their behavior. And at the time, I was too busy to respond because, of course, I was working on a video about fake leftists disingenuously calling for left unity in order to use our spaces to spread their right-leaning, often bigoted ideas. So, of course, you see, I had no time to think about shoe on head. No, no, I'm doing it again. I'm being snide. I mustn't be snide. Being snide is what got me into this mess. Look, I can't see inside Shuan Head's heart. If I were forced to guess, I'd imagine her conversion, so to speak, is genuine. I don't think she's lying about that, and I don't really give a shit if she is, and I don't think it would matter if she was. For the record, I find it far more likely that she did genuinely change her mind about some things, but also held on to a lot of her previous biases without realizing it. I think she's coming from a background of like, latent right-wing echo chambery spaces and she still has a lot of those ideas bouncing around in her brain it's not that she like sat down and like deliberately maliciously said mm, good i will infiltrate the leftists by pretending to be one of them that's a cartoon thing to do she didn't do that sometimes leftists are shitheads i i don't know what to tell you she would say i'm a shithead i would think that that wouldn't cause her to think i am like a fake leftist any more so than like a lot of people do now, she doesn't really so much talk about me in her video. She includes like two seconds of me talking, although within those two seconds, she does do some, mm, uh, let's call it creative editing. Why would okay, let's go. Let's see the editing. I want to see it. Let's, I want to see the creative editing. Struggling man even want to move left when the left appears actively hostile to them. The question of whether or not the hashtag online left is enough to appeal the hashtag men has become the question du jour, and like... That's 30 seconds of me exhaustively clarifying this point. Men have most of the money, authority, and do most of the murdering and assaulting. The average young man in America isn't Jeff Bezos. The pay gap in the US hasn't changed much in two decades, oops. Also, why did this mother just FBI crime statistics at me? Men do the most murder, okay? Sorry, Shu, I, I should have been clearer about this. I was talking about who has power over who in the scenario. You, you probably didn't realize that because it was in the part of the video that you skipped, but generally, when you're willing to kill someone, that grants you a certain power over them. Kind of thought that didn't need clarifying, but there you go. That's, that's why I threw that statistic in there. They like having all of the stuff they don't deserve. They like that. They, they want it to stay that way because it suits them. Because of the stuff, telling people they're special and deserve all the nice shit that they have, that's going to be an easier sell 10 times out of 10 than like... White men have most of the power. I guess when we speak uh, institutionally, yeah. Saying, hey, maybe you should have less stuff and other people should have more. Leftism is when you don't have a lot of stuff. No, I don't think leftism is about having less stuff. I, I do think it is about flattening unjust power dynamics and kind of dismantling oppressive power structures. And so 
if one group is systematically denied stuff, then yeah, taking stuff from the people denying it and giving it to them is indeed leftist. Kind of thought that went without saying, kind of thought that was self-evident. If one were to simply watch her video, which approximately three million people did, they'd get the impression that I was saying that three the left should not not do outly three million that was self-evident oh my god shuan had has 1.8 million subscribers if one were to simply watch her video which approximately three million people white men have most of the power but most white men have no i mean that tracks right three million people did they'd get the impression that i was saying that the left should not do outreach to men because Men are murderers and evil, when in fact, what I actually said was the left, by virtue of the positions we hold, will always have a harder time converting those who benefit from the structures we seek to dismantle, a position she herself states in the same video. But the fact is it's hard for progressives to organically appeal to men, because a large part of progressivism is oppressive hierarchies, and men are oppressors. Making progressivism look appealing to young men is an uphill battle from the start. And thus, the question of whether or not the left does enough to appeal to men is misguided. It's harder for the left to do that, kind of intrinsically. My point about men doing most of the murdering and assaulting, which is just a statistical reality, was not brought up, as Shu presents it here, as evidence that the left need not appeal to men. I brought it up, many sentences later, to demonstrate the relative power dynamics between men and not men. But she kind of just splices those two things together, and it gives the impression I'm simply dismissing men's concerns out of pocket. She hilariously had to skip past a part where I specifically say that there are, of course, exceptions to the general rule that men are more privileged than, say, women. Because if she didn't, it would become clear that her entire framing of this issue it's kind of horseshit. Because of course men have mental health problems, and of course those mental health problems are important and worth taking seriously. The only people she seems to be able to point to to say otherwise is like, weird Twitter randos. Given that she likes to, mm, uh, let's say, embellish the contents of some people's tweets, I don't find that argument necessarily persuasive. Saying that someone has privilege, or even indeed that they actively enforce a structure which privileges them, doesn't mean that like, we ought to never ever listen to them or help them with anything ever. If I were on fire, I would expect a less privileged person who is holding a fire extinguisher to help me. She also seems to be missing the broader critique people are I'll making. Help. I think that she's absolutely right, for example, to point out that it's kind of rude and shitty to- Prefer the framing of saying the bourgeoisie class has the most power, wherein it may be compromised in majority by white males. Comprised, not compromised. Comprised. To respond to a, a man having a mental health crisis by simply saying that mental health crisis is the result of patriarchy. I don't think it's fair to lay patriarchy at the feet of an individual man, and I don't think it's helpful to dismiss someone's mental health concerns on the basis of their own relative privilege, or even like their shitty attitude about it or whatever. Even if someone is like a, a sexist jerk, like their mental health problems are important. Mental health does not discriminate in this way. Even I mean guess. shitty people deserve to have their mental health treated and taken seriously. Okay. That being said, it does kind of seem to me like Shu is suggesting that discussions of patriarchy and privilege are the thing which makes men depressed and lonely, or at the very least, the thing which prevents feminists and leftists from addressing the issue that men feel undervalued and attacked specifically because of efforts to dismantle these privileges. Towards right. the end of her video, for example... So, this is like the... you're gonna get to the... soon, right? To the thing. Well, she says that men are natural providers and that their inability to provide makes them feel valueless. A lot of men's value comes from the money they make, unfortunately. Men are natural providers, and if they have nobody to provide for, they get into findom or send random girls on the internet money. I'm just kidding, but the fact is, a lot of men simply feel like they don't have a purpose anymore. Whether a job or a career that's fulfilling and pays well, or a woman or family to protect and take care of and provide for. And like... It does strike me as disingenuous to at once say that men feel undervalued because they're unable to be providers, which is obviously true and a serious problem, and then go on to say that men are natural providers, a phrase which insists that men are correct, that their value is based on how well they provide for others. It suggests that if a man's partner or family does not require him to provide for them, they are somehow robbing him of his natural position. 
This is, in my view, rather ironically, precisely the type of gender essentialism that creates the loneliness and depression she is ostensibly so concerned with. The idea of men just being naturally the providers is the justifying logic of patriarchy. Of course, it's not that non-men have been forbidden from or kept out of positions where they could provide for themselves. It's simply that men are, by nature of being men, naturally seeking out those positions and do them better That's because true. of their natural provider vibe. People should just be... People should just be able to pursue what they want to pursue without some sort of overarching expectation, right? Regardless of gender, there should not be this expectation of this group should be the group that does this or that, right? We should just all be able to do what we want to do, if that makes sense. And as simplistic as that sounds on its face, you know? Does that make sense? You see this logic apply. Time will get into how men themselves suffer from this assumption. Yeah. Which is, hmm, very interesting in a lot of ways. Then again, uh, everybody li likes, people just like to have a purpose in life in general, right? Like, people seek out some sort of purpose to find fulfillment. It's just there shouldn't be an expectation as to what that purpose should be. For example, taking jobs that are considered feminine. Right. I think in a lot of countries, a nurse is considered a feminine job. Each and every time some dickhead claims the wage gap doesn't exist and that women simply choose jobs which pay less. No thought is given as to why women choose those positions or why those positions are paid less. That's just what women do naturally because of their girl brains, which naturally don't want as much money as men. It's kind of silly, right? Because it's like a Speaking of which, I do want money, so please donate and subscribe because I'm a woman that wants all the money. Please. Right, yeah. Of course, there's no biological drive within men that makes them need to provide. It's the result of patriarchal conditioning, the justifying logic of patriarchy, of maintaining male privilege, backfiring, and making men sad because the thing it is justifying actually sucks. It sucks for everybody. So the solution to that problem is to undo that conditioning to help them understand that others are their equal and thus equally capable of providing for themselves. It does not make them weak or useless if their loved ones don't depend on them for survival. They need sure. not be the breadwinner. They are valuable and worthy of love either way, as indeed all people are. If the Being the breadwinner can be really exhausting, by the way. Oh, don't let me start it. Boys need to provide to be happy, fulfilled, and mentally healthy individuals. If that is just a natural, normal part of being a man, something they can't change, and our goal is to prevent them from feeling those feelings, that would seem to suggest that men should at least be financially privileged, so that they get to be the providers, that we shouldn't meddle in that natural, normal state of affairs. Now, yeehaw, hold up there, partners. I'm not trying to present that as Shu's opinion. I don't think it is. I doubt very much she would say that that is what she believes, consciously. I, I don't want to present those as her words, nor would I sing so low as to edit two sentences she said together to make them appear to be her words. They are not. She is not saying that. It would be a lie if I said that she was saying that. God, I wish I was the second earner. I wish I was the second earner. And then I then again I'm a trans woman, so I don't I'm not invested in the ego of being the top earner. Oh. Okay, I'm I, okay. That's the dream to not be the top earner. <laughs> that sounds so bad. <laughs> Mm. 
but it is it is the unavoidable extrapolation from from what she is saying. But yes, please do subscribe and donate because I I, I actually have to beat that up. <laughs> My God, <sighs> I'm so confused. Leaving me with the question: Does she kind of believe that on some level? Or did she simply not realize that implication? And in either case, it speaks to what I think is a blind spot in her reasoning. She seems to consistently frame the feelings of men as taking priority over the needs of others. She lists examples of women's victims. Correct. Lucy's a trad wife. Correct. Victories in the workplace. Oh, I can, so please subscribe. I cannot afford to be a trad wife unfortunately university and kind of just baselessly speculate that this is the reason we we'll see you, lulu you have to convince me to donate you want me to do a dance what do you want me to do to convince you to donate what, what do i have to do sing for you dance for you both at once tell you a poem tell you a story <gasps> Oh, Barry! Oh my gosh, Maya Mayor. Five tier one subscriptions to Karasu, Renitas, Bill Portley, Lozerk, and Baka Mono Dragon. Oh wow, I'm not even, I didn't even know what sort of audience I have. So, what do I have to do, fake Alec Carl Parker? I have to dance? Do I have to sing? Do I have to. What do I, what do I, what do I do? I also need to pay the tax. Oh my God, that's going to be, <sighs> that's going to be a nightmare, isn't it? Men are getting more depressed. If men have been dropping out of college like flies. Some 66.4% of all women had earned a degree within six years compared to 60.4% of men. Gender gap in graduation rates was slightly higher at private, not for profit colleges and universities. I sort of dropped out of university, but that's a long story. And what does that get you? Poor men. Which, since women are doing amazing in college now, and many are now out-earning men, this most of the time leads to single men, which then leads to lonely- Are men really- are women really out-earning men? I just- I, I just find it a bit hard to believe that women are, are out-earning men. You know? It's just a hard pill to swallow for me to believe that women are out earning men. Oh my gosh, fake Alec Culperker did not respond to my question. What do I need to do? Men, which leads to depressed men, which leads to the high. Okay, let's think that through for a minute. If that is the case, what are women to do about it? Simply forego their own ambitions, careers, and educations because pursuing them might depends on the professional country. It make the fellas sad. Were men what were you studying before you dropped out? Okay, so I should have done the smart thing, and I should have pursued history because I knew a lot of history at the end of high school. So I should have chosen the intelligent thing and I should have chosen to study history but I didn't choose the intelligent thing instead I cho chose to first study programming for some reason and the math sort of crushed me and then I started studying English because I was pretty good in English and then I ran out of money uh I studied some Japanese culture as well. I want to know the level of homophobia in Poland. I heard from some sources that in Poland um, have a problems with this thing. Yes, Poland is the Poland is the most anti-LGBT country in the entirety of the European Union. 
this might change with the new government, but we'll see. We'll see. We'll just see. I have a family of programmers. I have to go back to studying programming. It's actually a thing. History does suit you, yeah. I should study more history. History has always been a big part of my life and for some reason I just didn't go to study it. Maybe people just thought that I wouldn't be earning anything from being a history major. I disagree. Wait, with what? Wait, sorry, what? Oh, no, I, I'm going by some official, like, I, I'm going by some official ranking in which Poland ranked as the first worst in the entire EU. I'm just, I'm not going by, I'm just, I, 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 it used to be the case that Poland was the worst. I mean, I'm not proud of the title, so. Oh, well, you know. But Poland might actually, Poland actually has a chance now to get better with the LGBT stuff, so. Fingers crossed, because, you know. The new government supposedly will make things better on the front of the LGBT. So I guess so I guess Hungary will be will have that title definitely now if it gets better. Yeah. 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 I mean, in Poland, during the presidential campaign, it was the LGBT uh, are not people, they're an ideology. That was the main slogan that was thrown around. The LGBT are not people, they're an ideology, of course. Mm -hmm. Poland might, uh, again, Poland might get better now, so... Please keep your fingers crossed. And to accept that men become sad when they have fewer options, but would not other people as well? Would not women become sad if they cannot have job? And just spitball in here, while we're throwing out ideas, maybe those men could still date women that make more money than them. I mean, in Poland, speaking of things that were happening in Poland, th there was this loud story that two men were holding hands in the center of Warsaw and they got stabbed, not both, one of them got stabbed from behind, backstabbed by some bigot. Also Polish law is just wild. It is scary that constitution does not consider LGBTQ people Hungarians anymore, you know? And if we have a chance, one needs to, 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 to change the constitution now. Hungary is just... Hungary is just screwed. I hate, I hate to say it. Like, Poland at least had a chance to... for the opposition to win. And Hungary can hardly be called democracy at this point. Do you know that... Did you know that Orban said through his veto or whatever, that uh, the European Union should apologize for making false promises to Ukraine and that Ukraine is actually light years ahead of becoming part of the European Union as far as he is concerned. Did you know that about this little nugget of news? that Orban said that the European Union just lied to Ukraine and that as far as he's concerned, Europe, like Ukraine is just light years ahead before it will be able to join. <sighs> so 
So yeah. Hungary is something else. I'm telling you. Eight years ahead, as in should already be part of... You're way behind. It'll take light years for the... Orban says that the European Union lied, and it'll take light years for Ukraine to uh, get to the European Union. Yeah. Uh, well, that is what Orban said very recently, that the European Union sort of is making false promises about... Uh, the progress of Ukraine in, into getting uh, of getting into the European Union. You know? So that's nice, isn't it? I mean, we can look l we can look the story up after the video, but Orban did say something like that. Also in Poland, by the way, I'm transitioning, right? Um uh, a light here is a measure of distance, but it's measured in time, isn't it? It's measured in the time that it takes for light to pass a certain amount of distance. No? Hence light year. The distance that it takes uh, light to pass through a year, no? I signed a petition the other day for abortion rights. I touched fast and did something good. Ukraine today is probably better ranking democracy than Hungary. <laughs> probably yes. Yeah, I, unironically, yeah. Probably yeah. Now I want to make a segment on it, on Ukraine being probably better rank, ranked in democracy than Hungary. You need to help me, Karasu. I want to make... Uh, that's a good segment to do. That's a really good segment to do. Very soon-ish. I have to look into it. It is power hungry, I agree. And even if it sort of means like it's not even time, it means like the distance that you, you can just say that what Orban meant is that the distance is the distance between Ukra Ukraine and the European Union is infinitely huge. You can, you know. Oh, someone just subscribed. Thank you, Yutone, Yutone for subscribing. Thank you for the Obey! Thank you for the twenty five dollars, fake Alec Parker. I've still not responded to the question. Oh my god, thank you. About transition in Poland. I'm about to tell you. I like you, Goober. Okay, so what I want to say is I'm transitioning, right? I'm undergoing the process. I'm a, I don't know. So I should be sort of, technically speaking, I should be accepted as a trans woman, no? By Poland. But no. Actually, in the light of the law, I am a man still. You know? So that means that I, if I were to do anything intimate with a woman, I'd be considered, it would be considered a heterosexual interaction by the law in Poland. And if I were to do anything with a man, it would be considered by the law of Poland a gay activity because in the light of law I'm a man but once I sue my parents
in the light of law, I'm going to be suddenly a woman, which means that then after I sue my parents in court and my birth certificate and my documents get changed, if I do something intimate with a woman, that means that a law or that a court order will change me from straight to lesbian and with a man it will change me from gay to straight make this make sense a, a court order can turn you from gay to straight in the eyes of the law the courts can make you straight that's incredible The miracle of the judiciary system. <laughs> well, how Ukraine will go into election when country are in war with Russia, it's very high risk. I mean, Ukraine is not going to have an election, and that's fine. Ukraine should not force an election during wartime. That would be ridiculous. So, yes. How do you like that little trivia? How do you like that? Take that, Polish. Law. So you're gonna have to take your mom to court eventually. And my deceased father. Technically speaking, I'm also suing my father, but because my father is no longer with us, a representative to stand in uh, for my father will be chosen in the court. And ironically, that is how that works. Even if your parents are both no longer in this world, you have to uh, you have to sue the stand-ins. Must be confusing for bi people. True. You have to sue your parents. That's a requirement to change your birth certificate. That's a bit B. Oh, well, that is a requirement. Is it costly to sue someone? I don't know. It's not super costly, but it actually, like, in my in my case, it's a bit of a formality. Yes, I have to sue my father as well. There will be a stand-in in court. Uh, so, in my case, it's a bit of a formality. In reality, it was my mom's supportive, right? But... Imagine a scenario in which the parents are not supportive, right? They don't agree. They are like, no way. I don't, I don't want my kids to be trans. And then it becomes a legitimate court battle. You know, when, you're, when your parents are okay with it, then it's just, yeah, sure, whatever. It's a formality. But when your parents actually don't agree with you transitioning, then... It becomes an actual legal battle with your parents over whether or not you can change your documents. And yes, the logic is actually that the parents made a mistake of misgendering at birth. You know? I remember telling this for the first time to my mom, right? I remember telling my mom, I'm going to have to... Uh, sue you for misgendering me uh, at birth. And do you know what my mom said? Do you know what my mom said? You curious what my mom answered to that? My goodness, my mom always has a response. No, no, the stand-in will not disagree. The stand-in is just a stand-in. So do you know what my mom's response was when I told her that I have to sue her for misgendering me at birth? <laughs> she said, hey, keep me out of this. I didn't misgender you. The doctor did. Sue the doctor. <laughs> I mean, 
I mean, that would make, s I mean, can I even argue that? Can I even argue with that? <sighs> My goodness. <sighs> to the doctor. I didn't misgender you. He did. The doctor did. Oh, gosh. I mean, she is, but, you know. Uh. <laughs> I, I, I mean, right? Oh, goodness. It is correct, technically speaking. It is true. Unless somehow they came to the conclusion that in order... It usually is the doctors or nurses that first state the gender by recognition of assigning the baby. Yeah, it's like a person gives birth and then usually the doctor says it's a boy, a girl or whatever. Oh, I got a new, I got a new comment. People are so confused by me. It's, it's like, I cannot believe how, how much I confuse people. I got a comment just now that said, are you, a man or a woman, I know, understand. Well, it's going to have to be, it's going to have to be a mystery forever for you. You're going to have to keep watching my videos to find that out. Obviously, the problem comes from the genitalia is not so binary looking. Congrats on 1k subs, Lucy, so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. We're at 1056 right now. My mom worked as a nurse and they had been seeing cases of babies not so easy to recognizable. I mean, it's not as simple as people would like it to be. Things are a bit more complicated. So yeah, I've just been told on YouTube that they Someone does not know if I'm a man or a woman. They're, they're confused. To be a, a, a good partner and desirable as a man, they would... Why is this person cutting the vegetable over the child's... What? Well, that's... Why? Would need to be the... Is this the person teaching this child how to cut vegetables or what? Oh yeah, there's a huge protest about that, by the way, about the um, intersex people having surgeries at infancy. Yeah, there's a huge protest protest against that. I mean, intersex people aren't too rare. When it becomes a problem, is though, is when people try to force corrective surgery on being. Yeah, yeah. There's I've seen that there are a lot of protests going on uh, around, like against this practice right now. Intersex people are trying to protect the future generations. Probably a lot, actually, a lot. The natural provider. And, and hence they protest, right? To protect the future generations. Fighter, unless that were the case. Of course, it's not that I think Shu believes men's feelings should take first priority. That would be a ridiculous thing for her, a woman, to believe. It's just that I think her sympathies are more in line with anti-feminist positions than one might expect. And she's not doing that in like an insidious way, you know? It's just that she was an anti-feminist for a long time. She's obviously sympathetic to their reasoning and is- She might not agree with that as a characterization, but come on, yes, she was. I mean, she was. Cultivated a following of people who are also 
very sympathetic to that reasoning. You can see that, for example, when she brings up women being more likely to go to post-secondary education, as though that implies men are, if anything, actually economically disadvantaged, that we have overcorrected, and now men are the ones being held back. But like she said that, didn't she? She said that. Come on, couples, raid me. You know you want to. Like, those figures change a lot when you compare graduation rates for fields that are more likely to make lots and lots of money. At one point, she talks about how the Tumblr feminists she was mocking back in the day are now transphobes, and thus, we all should have cut her some slack back then. 90% of all homicides recorded worldwide were committed by male perpetrators. We should just get rid of all males, to be honest. This includes trans women, as they still retain male violence. By the way, you know the Tumblr feminists who were like, all men are sexist and rapist, male tears, penises are evil, blah blah blah, back in the day? Well, this is them now. Should have just let me cook back then. I... I think there are a few problems with what she's saying here. I a friend of mine was an estrogen for a large part of his life because his parents decided, uh, eh, we'll go with girl. Why didn't my parents go with girl? Why didn't my parents put me on estrogen? For the large part of my life. Why, why, why couldn't that happen to me? Seems like man teaching son how to be man. Conservative values. Cutting vegetables is conservative values. And teaching a boy how to be man. I just got here. Yes, we are watching that Dr. Johns. Correct. I think that there are, for example, a lot of valid criticisms of Tumblr-style pop feminism. And I think... Chief among those criticisms is a culture of toxic performative inclusion where people climb over one another to tick more diversity boxes rather than meaningfully examine the power dynamics between different types of people in any sincere way. And of course, no doubt some Tumblr-style hyper-online feminist keyboard warriors have grown turfy in old age. But that isn't a criticism, I think, that necessarily applies to that style of pop feminism. At worst, I guess you could say that it's vulnerable to entryism from turf lords, but that seems much more common among the type of people Shu was pals with at that time. Nor do I think she was fighting with them on that basis, nor do I think anyone who criticized her prior anti-feminist position would have been mad at her if she had been, nor does her allegiance to trans rights seem all that ironclad seeing as how she later goes on to claim that within leftist spaces trans men are somehow less discriminated against than cis men. Misandry is real. Oh, oh good. Finally. And while it doesn't systemically affect cis men, it most certainly affects trans men. Oh. Y'all talking about misandry doesn't harm men, and trans men are right there reading this shit, by the way. I see, now we only care about misandry because it affects trans men. Everyone stop. It's affecting a group I care about now. Oh, for sure. If there's one group that I think gets no benefit of the doubt, it's, it's cis men. Uh, and trans people famously always given the benefit True. of the doubt. That makes a lot of sense. You're a serious person. It's Miss. Okay. I think Todd Slime is a bit more on the right when it comes to this, but because I guess we're discussing a issue. But why Todd Slime? There's a new video that dropped, so I decided to react to it. on head. You are confused, I think. When people say misandry doesn't exist, they, they, they don't mean it like you think they mean it. Because of course it's possible for people to not like men or to speak Join ill. Join the page, Dr. Johns. Join the page. Like, I'm not a big fan of thoughts line myself, but if the argument is not bad, then the argument is not bad. Right? We're not in team sports here. We're we're judging people by their arguments even if thought slime is pretty slimy and never apologized to Xander Hall about the sex cult stuff. All of them or to individually have prejudices against them. That's common sense. When people say that misandry doesn't exist, they mean it more in the sense that it doesn't exist as a systemic oppressive force in the same way that misogyny does. That also, is you can use super chats now. You can always super chat me on YouTube if you want. If you don't want to go to the page, now you, you're you able to super chat me now. Because I've unlocked the... I've unlocked this magical ability if you're watching on YouTube.
Any systemic problems men might face are better understood as a product of the maintenance of patriarchy than a willful effort to oppress men and privilege women. People are quick to distinguish between cis men and trans men about this because the world treats those two groups quite differently. People often impose restrictions and oppression on trans men in a way they do not on cis men, and thus, it is necessary to point out the distinction. Ben Affleck is history's most sad man, nobody bats an eye. Elliot Page doesn't smile for like two seconds in an interview, obviously transitioning has robbed him of all joy. I feel joy. I feel Came joy. My dog going on walks. So, so much so joy. Much does, does it look like this person experiences any kind of joy? Do you see the difference? Studies have shown that men are scared to be vulnerable, even around the homies. And can you blame them when the media says stupid shit like this? Fellas, is it woke to open up to your fellow men and discuss history? Men are socialized to believe strength, what? dominance, and stoicism are behaviors of a real man. Is it any surprise that men are lonely and have less friends nowadays? The video she pulled the clip of me talking from, by the way, is actually about this distinction. The difference between toxic masculinity and just guys being dudes. It's a video all about how meat-headed Dumbo fake masculinity makes men lonely and miserable. That guys like Nick Adams, who pose outdated gender essentialist stereotypes on men, are, in my opinion, the primary drivers of the male loneliness epidemic she is criticizing here. Hey, have you ever noticed that the version of masculinity that guys like Adams promote is fucking miserable? That all of the little weirdos, Jordan Peterson, Andrew Tate, the fresh and fit ghouls, they all propose this type of manhood that is just completely joyless and empty, where bonds between people are impossible. And the only way two human beings- I mean, you have only, according to the Red Pill, you don't have bonds, you have transactions and you have like value levels that you sort of combine, like contrast and compare to one another. That's actually so true. And it's so bad. I, I hate this so much, this sort of, Don't get me started on this whole transactionalizing of human relationships. Okay. ...can relate to one another is through the veiled or not so veiled threat of violence. The idea that men must be strong at all times and never show their feelings that's gonna make them crack because people can't do that. It seems pretty obvious to me that men have feelings and, and I think therefore should let those feelings be expressed. So fellas, how you feeling? Comment below. She argues, however, that toxic masculinity has been around forever. And if anything, nowadays, it's more accepted for men to talk about their feelings. So they should be feeling pretty tight actually. Men have been socialized this way for centuries, and this is all relatively a new phenomenon. Toxic masculinity has existed forever. If anything, there's less toxic masculinity nowadays. The cultural embrace of like gender nonconformity, femboys, Harry Styles in a dress, Barbie movie, blah, 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 blah. My point is toxic masculinity did not just appear in the mid 2010s. I, I genuinely have no idea what she thinks toxic masculinity is here. She seems to understand it primarily as like needing to present traditionally masculine, which is certainly part of it, I suppose. But, you know, there's still the whole men being socialized not to talk about their feelings thing you literally just talked about. Like you literally just talked about feels like it's still a pretty big problem, actually, based on the thing you just said. She instead places the blame partially on economic anxiety, which yeah, I would agree with to an extent. The housing crisis and living in a country where the wealth inequality is worse than it was during the Gilded Age, that all happened recently. And the rise of social media and internet pornography, which is... But social media did, and the internet did, and the rise of dating apps did. A lot of people, including myself, blame this partially on... Dudes look at trans allegory and make that uh, their main on the rise of social media and technology. Ah, uh, yes, yeah, the red, I, that's, yeah, you're right. Red IP pill. to the king. Although technology makes things easier, it can also make us more atomized. Why go to the mall when I can just tap, 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 buy a new microphone and have it shipped to me in a day? Why hang out with friends when I can get all my social interaction I need from Twitter and streamers? Why go on dates and bother meeting women when I can just tap, 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 Google big boob and get two million results? Or see my high school crush's holes on OnlyFans for only five dollars? I don't quite think that works like this, but... I mean... Colors. Instant sort of dopamine, kind of instant satisfaction, and hey, who even needs a real woman when you could just have an AI? I mean... 
at the end of the day, people cannot just function solely online. My girlfriend. We're f***ed. We're so f***ed. Okay. Uh, so a couple problems. I have it on good authority that there are people on social media and indeed within the economy who are not men. So why then would the rise of social media make men specifically more unhappy? Why would economic anxieties primarily- If you say don't show emotions, fear, tears is a male issue or more for everyone? <sighs> I think it depends. I think in... I think in public settings, crying is sort of discouraged across the board. I think in sort of private situations, it's considered a bit more quote unquote natural to for girls to cry. But then again, I cry more because I'm on estrogen now. So I, I, I cry definitely more than I used to. So there's also that. But then again, when I was on the first puberty, that was the boy puberty, I used to cry as well. So I'm just a crybaby. I'm just a boring crybaby. And also, but it also can depend on the country that you live in, by the way, the whole emotion thing. Right? It's, it depends on the, your country of origin as well. <sighs> yeah. As a child, I used to not to want to I used to not cry at all in sort of in a as I like in second third grade I used to be like considered a person that can be hurt and punched etc and would never cry I remember really not wanting to show people that I cry ever That it wasn't gendered in my case, you know? I was, I think, I, I think in my case it was something else. Because there was no expectations. There were no expectations. People expected me to cry actually and were shocked that I didn't. So it's, it was a bit different. It's, hmm. I have to think about it actually affect men why is it do you think internet pornography is so bad for men when various non-men are perfectly capable of becoming horny don't believe me turn off safe search and google spider punk seems like if that was the explanation everyone would be getting sadder because everyone is equally exposed to these things and since it seems to be the case that this would affect everyone and in case you want to dispute that here's you saying it a few new studies have come out that have shown that young men are more lonely and single than ever before but it's not just men the women and children too. It's predicted 45% of women will be single and childless by 2030. But according to the media, this is a good thing. The she economy is booming, as they say. Wouldn't framing this as a men's issue, which we need to look after men's concerns in order to correct, kind of imply that men's mental health takes priority over that of others? Shu attempts to make the case that the reason the right is more successful at courting young boys Yeah, that's how I'm going to phrase it, is that the left d d doesn't even talk to them. We just sit in our ivory tower and we don't care and we just say, it's not my job to educate you. And we sip our soy lattes and invent new pronouns to call each other. You. Now listen, I will, I will never try to make the argument that leftists are not annoying. If your point was simply that leftists should be less annoying, I would open my heart to your words. You would be speaking directly to my soul, but to suggest that any leftist anywhere on earth would- I will never abandon being annoying. Being annoying is my whole brand, isn't it, Gigglers? Is it in my whole spiel being annoying?
Isn't that the whole... Isn't, isn't it my brand to be annoying? Would give up the opportunity to talk for a long period of time at anyone who might theoretically listen? Ludicrous. Fanciful. Ludicrous. Wishful thinking. Ludicrous. I think she is once again just taking the right's framing of this for granted. That the right are the only ones taking men's concerns seriously and treating them like human beings. To wit, a bunch of mean tweets from leftists. Leftists make mean tweets about men, so obviously they don't know any or, or talk to any. And, and if one can't be reasonable on Twitter, a place famous for level-headed, even-keeled discussion, then surely they have abandoned the male race. Unlike the right, who is famously polite on Twitter and always work hard to take men's mental health very seriously and reach out gently with a sympathetic ear. Kindness, compassion, understanding, these are the watchwords of right-wing Twitter. She gives, as a case study of this phenomenon, a young Mr. Andrew Tate and presents his explosion in popularity as a sort of Look, it's the top G. It's the top G. Organic consequence of the left abandoning men to the mercy of the right. Guys like Tate and Peterson, she claims, rose to power. Andrew Tate, the top G. Simply because men yearned for genuine mental health advice and the left was simply too uncaring to offer it to them. Instead, choosing to vilify them as toxic and privileged. Imagine thinking that Andrew Tate offers you genuine, genuine health care advice. Mental health advice. Imagine, imagine believing such a thing. And to repeatedly insist, they do not commit sexual assault. The reason young men flock to alt-right MRA movements is because the left gives brain-dead advice to young men. I'm sorry, but how is respect women brain-dead advice? What advice? Don't rape? Don't be a rapist is bad advice? Help, I have no friends or community, I feel suicidal. Um, have you considered not raping. So she makes a lot of hay of this, and she is, of course, correct in pointing out uh, that it won't help any man's individual mental health to hear that. But also, it seems really weird to suggest, some might say dishonest to suggest, that that was the point anyone was making. Because really, it seems pretty clear that the tweets she was showing weren't suggesting men are depressed and lonely because they are rapists, and that the left advises them to knock that off but rather that guys like this are true what you really need to do to help yourself with your depression is to get a bugatti or whatever like andrew tate did that's the ticket get a bugatti thank you for coming to my talk or giving bad advice which encourages men to behave rapefully like a lot of their advice boils down to disregard people's boundaries. And that's kind of a fucked up thing to teach people, I think is the point everyone was making with this with this glib remark. It does not seem as though they were genuinely offering do not rape as mental health advice. I don't think it was her intention to be sympathetic to Peterson or Tate. She is, after all, making this video, partially at least, to talk about how harmful they specifically are and how the left, in her view, is ill-equipped to confront them. Oh. She nonetheless seems to share their view of themselves and their role in the discourse and how they became popular. She says, for example, that Tate seldom talks about politics. He just talks about men. Andrew Tate rarely, if ever, talks about politics. Andrew Tate- uh, That depends on what you see as talking about politics, doesn't it? Hmm? Doesn't it? Yeah? talks about men and the left only talks about men when they talk about andrew tate i don't really know what that means like i guess tate doesn't talk about electoral politics very often he does sometimes but not as often as other stuff but like discussing men and the way that men ought to behave and how the world ought to treat men or what weird outfits what is that weird weird underwear anyone else and the various power dynamics between those groups, that is political. If we divorce these men from their own myth-making, the circumstances of their respective rises to popularity are quite different than Shu has presented them here. Jordan Peterson first grew to popularity by lying about Bill C-16, a needlessly controversial amendment to the Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms, which extended existing protections against discrimination to include discrimination against gender identity. He rode the popularity wave of transphobic hate speech and parlayed that into a career as a public intellectual and parlayed that into a self-help grift. He didn't simply get popular out of nowhere because men yearned for his sage advice. Andrew Tate became popular on social media by having the men in his self-help groups receive discounts if they flooded social media with posts about how cool and or sick he is. It wasn't simply an effect of his natural charisma. Sparkling water you have to buy. So if you only drink sparkling water, you only drink rich man's water. 
You ever meet a man who's afraid of sparkling water, know this. He's certainly afraid of combat. For a world that was yearning for someone like him, it was a deliberate and clever, albeit highly unethical, media strategy that paid off. Something he was able to pursue because he was already a very successful sex track. I cannot believe that people like this are successful. Please consider donating. Oh my god. Trafficker. Both of these guys have an easy time winning the allegiance of young boys and depressed, Sick. desperate men because they're willing to lie. They don't actually care about the well-being of these men and boys. They'll, they'll just say whatever makes them a quick buck. No Even kidding. if what they're saying hurts those men and boys, they'll, no they'll just sell them whatever easy answers they already want to hear. That's why their audiences are full of either very young people who lack adult critical thinking skills or vulnerable people who are more easily subject to that type of emotional manipulation. They have no problem claiming that, if you do as they say, all your problems will just be solved forever on their own, you'll stop being depressed, you'll make more money, you'll get strong, you will receive mad puss. It's not that, like, leftists just never- What if I want calm puss? Better get it? Calm puss as, as opposed to mad? Never mind. Thought of offering advice to men, it's that this is not a strategy that the left Never mind. could or should emulate. Because, like, our goal, I hope, is not simply to trick people for easy money. We can't just lie to them. We can't ignore their safety or best interests in service of getting them to do what we want. We can't say, for example, that if they become intersectional feminists and study bell hooks, they'll get mad put. Bell hooks is a pretty good author, to be fair. I don't think it would hurt, but I, why would it help? Bell Hooks has a really good book. It's called Feminism is for Everyone. There you go. Or was it Feminism is for Everybody? I think it's Feminism is for Everybody. It's a really good book. Everybody should read it. I like it a lot. Well, I don't think it would do that. It, it's certainly not a guarantee. I think we can agree on that much. There are a lot of factors which determine whether or not you get mad puss. Perhaps take some time to examine why it is you feel entitled to mad puss in the first place. And for that matter, whether you are seeking mad puss simply as a means of projecting a sort of misguided social capital. After you've done that work, also try learning guitar. I don't know, maybe that'd help. Beyond even that, once again, as I said in the video she misquoted me from, it is just more difficult to get a privileged group on the side of eliminating said privilege because you know, they benefit from it. That's, it privileges them, one might say. That is what privilege is. It's the only way that privilege can exist, because otherwise, if no one had an interest in maintaining it, it would just evaporate. It would go away on its own. Okay. That does not require, of course, that the privileged group is- well, Let me see if Kefos is preparing to raid me. Kefos is still streaming. Remember, remember to remind Kefos to raid me or something. Kefos does not raid me. She hates trans people. Consciously, willfully suppressing those they have privilege over, though sometimes they might be, or that they're necessarily deliberately malicious in some way, though sometimes they might be. Men aren't privileged because they sit around scheming about how to oppress other people, obviously. I think it goes without saying that most men, given the choice, would prefer that all people are treated equally. I think that is the normal thing that pretty much everyone wants, but it's just self-evidently more difficult to get people who benefit from inequality on board with the project of equality. All things being equal, people like to have benefits. Why else would most feminist icons be women? Why else would most civil rights icons be black? This isn't difficult stuff. This isn't complex theory, it's common sense, and here's you saying it. Men flock to the MRA movement because they're the largest beneficiaries of MRA shit. Imagine saying women flock to women's rights activism because they're the biggest beneficiaries of women's rights. Like, no f***ing shit. I actually think they uh, harm men quite a bit, but, you know, you were responding to someone who, who phrased it as though they... They help men, so I guess I'll give you a pass on that one. Still, maybe that's something you, you might have wanted to clarify. I would have thought, at least, that it, it wasn't controversial to say that we need not try to court or appeal to people whose goals and beliefs are directly contrary to our own. Like, the, we obviously cannot convince everyone. People who explicitly reject our goals should not be welcome within our movement. We either get those people on board with our goals, or we tell them to fuck clean off. And we're never I mean, gonna get everyone on board. Then again, ah, this one's tough since you've just decided that Sander Hall is not part of your movement and you decided that he has a sex cult. So you told him to fuck off. 
So this is where your argument sort of falls flat, I guess. Right? Or some people need to be told to fuck clean off. The goals are the whole thing the movement is for. So the real problem is who do you say it to? And how do you know you're even correct in saying it? Does that make sense to you? To all of you? What I'm saying here? I'm not talking about the background right now. That's, that's, oh my God, that's not what I'm talking about right now. There's no sense. Yeah, sure, Shuan had is, but I don't see that way. I don't see Xander Hall that way, for example. And Thought Slime for all intents and purposes this did tell him to, quote unquote, go away. You know? Building a big movement, if that movement doesn't have a goal in line with what we want, perhaps our energy is better spent making the rejection of our goals politically costly than just banging our heads against the wall, trying fruitlessly to convert people whose material interests mot I like Xander Hall, so. motivate them to oppose us. It seems like an effective strategy because each time one of these costs is extracted, the right piss and shit their diaper about how Back. unfair and scary it is. They seem to dislike this strategy quite a bit, which suggests to me that it is working. Of course, they'll always say it doesn't. And if your audience is full of people with that kind of sympathy, you might come to believe that it, that it doesn't work because the people who don't want us to do it are telling you that. When I talk about people who oppose our goals, I don't mean men as a category of person because men are, give or take, roughly half the population. It would be disastrously unwise to simply abandon half of the population. I do not think men, as a general rule, are evil or unreachable or that the left should simply not try to get men on board or accept that sexist men can never have their minds changed. That's maybe something I should have specified in the video, because a lot of people seem to think or were motivated to pretend I was saying that we should never try to get men on board with us. So I should have made that clear. Oh, hey, wait a minute. Wait just one minute. I just looked on HTTPS call. Are you going to say that you already did clarify all of that? I bet you're going to say you already clarified that. The smugness is on the display. In slash slash y o u t u dot b e slash g f l four s e four p z w g question mark s i equals y g l w p k r q f four g o dash g n nine and t equals eight eight nine. And I did. I did do that. Mere seconds after the clip she used in her video. We have to be okay with alienating certain groups of people. Just pausing here because I don't think I did a great job of clarifying this point. I am not saying that dudes are unreachable. I'm saying that there are a portion of dudes who are unreachable. You like supporting goals, don't you? Me? Poetic vote? Yeah, I, I, I do like supporting goals. Why? I, I do. Yeah, why? Also, you can super chat now. In YouTube. They're a small minority. That's so fucking weird. Cause it, cause from the way that people are talking to me, from the way that people are responding to what I said, it's as though I didn't say that. And what's up with that, everybody? It's kind of like my words were taken out of a larger word zone. I don't know if there's a term for that, but like, do you see my point here? Cause our position is basically, hey there, fellas. Can you give me a summary of what's being said here. Uh, so he's talking about. They, they're sorry. They're talking about shoe on head. Uh, they're talking about shoe on head misrepresenting them, talking about men's issues, and on the way they're talking about men's issues. There you go. That's 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 the gist of it. That is the gist of it. They're being misrepresented by shoe on head. We try to tell that they're saying that men should be discarded, that the left wants to just discard men, and they're saying that no, I sort of explained that it's there's a lot more to it. Or something. You so should that's basically it. Join us, because here's why. 
it's the right thing to do. And while you obviously benefit enormously from the structure as it is that we're attempting to dismantle, people other than you will suffer. So please accept this enormous moral burden for the rest of your life. Well, the right wing position is basically, hey, fellas, you know, those people you want to. That's very true, though, given how worthless she was. I mean, it's sort of true, though control well they should be your slaves and they should cook and clean and fuck you whenever you want because you're cooler and smarter than them basically you're really special and you deserve that and if any of that makes you feel bad like it makes you feel like you have some empathy for them just know just know that god said so and god is the moral arbiter of the universe so it's it's okay to think this it's normal and natural do you see how the bad position is kind of an easier sell how that's a clear value proposition how the left is kind of fighting an uphill battle, and to suggest that it's simply a lack of effort on our part is kind of willfully, disastrously ignorant, how our methods are not so easily disentangled from our goals, and to suggest that we emulate the methods of our opponents. But I just don't like smugness, even if it's... I just, I'm not, I'm not a fan of smugness, okay? Unless it's funny. Funny smugness can be nice, but smugness, I don't like that. But they literally lied about Xanderhal, so they're probably more like than they like to it. I mean, yeah, there is that. There is that aspect, yeah. Points can be still valid, but true. That's why we're judging this by the point, not by the person could have the unintended consequence of undermining those goals. Now, none of this should be controversial. I would call it Feminism 101, but it's like, it's not even that, really. These are the starting positions that everyone should be able to agree on, that a feminist might use to construct a Feminism 101 argument. Even the most ardent anti-feminist should be able to admit that if male privilege exists... Wait, who's makeup? There are no guys here. The, the, the plus time is non-binary. Sorry, I, I sort of misgendered for a second there, but... Plot slime is not a guy. Plot slime is non binary. I was judged by the person, though. You should judge by the argument. I think this is a funny way to present the misrepresentation. I guess. The way I was smug in this video makes me cringe. I mean, that's the sort of the... That is thought slime sort of method of presentation in general. Whether or not they can see that it does, some men would want it. Far be it for me to suggest that she in any way read my video in bad faith because I really don't think she watched it. She probably just watched the video she linked in her description of Vosh, who did read it in bad faith, and, and she got mad at that. It was just, you know, more helpful to both of their positions to pretend to believe that I am saying that all men are bad and evil and decide to do harm to not men on purpose because of their bad, evil nature. That men deserve to be lonely and non-men should isolate themselves from men who are too dangerous to be trusted. Which is a weird thing to think that I would advocate for because... While I don't consider myself a man, strictly speaking, I am typically perceived as one. I piss amongst the men folk, and nobody finds that unusual or strange. I have, within my possession, an entire penis and testicles. Many people, superstitiously, would argue that that alone makes me intrinsically and irrevocably male. So do you see how that line of argumentation could kind of backfire on me? Do you see why it would be disastrously unwise for me to stand in front of 300,000 people and say, hey everybody, you know that group that you, you think I'm part of? That I can never leave? They're evil and they want to kill you and you should stay away from them. They cannot be reached or changed. Do not trust them. It is not worth our time or effort to try. That could kind of backfire on me, don't you think? This should be obvious if one applies even the most basic standard of critical thinking. Instead of trying to imagine, I said, whatever makes your audience most mad. And I'm being very critical of Shu here, I'm mad. but like, let's give the devil her due. I think she likely does genuinely care about men's mental health issues. I to, be to be fair, thought time kind of made their bed uh, with Vosh taking them in bad faith. Sort of, yeah. It's a mess. Why can't people be like me? Full of love and solidarity and stuff. You know? Be like me. Be full of love and hugs and sometimes different things.
I think she has enough compassion to see people suffering and to be moved by it. Let us now observe Shu's compassion for men. Nobody told me how lonely being a man is. We knew what de depth felt like before we transitioned. We knew what it felt like to like have people want to hug us and to have people want to talk to us and to have a community. And then you transition and you're just a guy walking down the street that people cross the street so that they're not near you. None of this invalidates how real and raw women and people who are in marginalized groups feel about cis white Men. I love how even when he's experiencing the issues of being a man, he's like, this doesn't invalidate people hating men. Come on, bro. Did he say it's okay to hate men? Did he say that? Because it sounded like he said a different thing. And you just kind of vilified a man having a mental health breakdown. That's- Hello, Notbrooks. The volume difference between you and the video is amazing. Raise your mic. It's more than- Raise your makeup. It's more than- It's more- the usual. Wait, re nobody told me this. Why didn't no anybody tell me that I'm quieter than the video? It's nobody's listening to me, are you? Oh. Wait, really? I'm gonna make a sound check now. I can I cannot believe nobody told me this for all this time. You're super quiet. Wait, hold on. Okay, so... It's the type of thing okay. one might not do if they... I am pretty quiet. Yeah, wait, hold on. I'm just gonna make the video quieter. You have not! Oh my god. Oh my god. Wait, hold on. He cared about men's mental health. Listen up, chuckle f I'm white, social- Groups feel about cis white men. Okay. How about even when he's experiencing the issue there of you being go. a man, he's like- Now I'm not quieter than men. the video. Did he say it's okay? I'm echoing because I'm listening to myself. I'm doing a audio check. And to do an audio check, I need to have the echo. Kinda hot. Stop it. Okay, so there we go. No more echo, no more problem. Also, I owe you a book, not Brooks. I owe you a book, which I have to send to you. You said you couldn't hear me because I speak. Yeah, I, I'm being gaslit. Never mind. I owe you a book, not Brooks. We should talk on stream or something about smart topics. I'll never stop play. <gasps> Thank you to the loudness fund. Thank you. You're helping me to fund my evil, I mean not evil, my goals. Thank you. Okay, let's continue the video. <gasps> oh, someone just go subscribe. Okay, that was a donation. Oh wow, the super chat. Yes, I owe you a, a book and, uh, and and let's talk or something about smart things that are beyond my comprehension. Okay, let's continue. I wasn't listening to stream at the start of this, so I couldn't, oh my God. Did I hate men? Did he say Wait, that? Because it sounded okay. like he said a different thing and you just kind of vilified a still man okay? having a mental okay. health breakdown. That's the type of- All right, of still okay. The thing one might not do if they cared about men's mental health. Listen up, chuckle f Tell Brooks to come to the real chat, true. I'm white, socially awkward, autistic, in my 40s, ugly, overweight, crippled, got a weird balding pattern, and have bad skin. You know what I didn't do? Choose to become yeah. a fascist. I may be hideously ugly and pathetic, but at least I'm not a fascist. Thank you for your input, buddy. You're, uh, 
I mean, really help in the situation. Oh, I don't know. Maybe this is just. I mean, it's good not to become a fascist. And if you have weird bullying pattern, take estrogen. That's my advice. It did wonders for me. <laughs> okay, that's just sound weird. Just me, but I do feel like if someone is talking about all of the problems they have with their appearance, that is a sign that they are perhaps not emotionally healthy. And uh, to laugh at them and call them hideous and pathetic could be perceived as one not caring about that person's mental health. And it makes her mad when she thinks she sees people. I mean, I have problems with my appearance. You can probably tell. Dismissing that suffering. And it also makes her mad to see me at all. So she would like very much to pretend that is what I did. But no, I was actually not snidely dismissing their suffering. I was snidely supporting their suffering. And I'm not like mad that she used a clip of me that made me look bad because that would make me a huge hypocrite. I make myself look bad all the time. It's fun to do. I get one need simply observe the lighting in this video. That I just think that her analysis of this subject is is dangerously myopic. That she's really applying a bad faith lens to any and all feminist analysis, no matter how basic. She doesn't seem willing to consider the greater context that any of these issues exist within. And she seems to give a lot more weight and consideration to anti-feminist arguments than I think is helpful in this discussion. But, 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 that doesn't mean we have to behave in the same way. We don't need to miss her larger point either, because she is correct, of course, that there is a mental health crisis, and it does affect men, that men kill themselves at alarming rates, that men feel despondent and hopeless and lonely, and it behooves us all to try and be as compassionate as we can in dealing with that. But, you know, let's be careful who we blame that problem on, because it's not that the left isn't trying, it's that the right is able to manipulate people, and we're trying not I'm to not do that. Too. And that puts us inherently at a disadvantage. And the worst thing Hello, we Arkai. could do right now is try to adopt similar tactics because that would be abandoning men. That would be not taking Hello. their concerns or well-being seriously. Instead, I think the basic common sense solution to all of these problems is a sort of mandatory feminization of all cis men. We will sweep across the globe like a horde of estrogen locusts and destroy the entire concept of maleness and masculinity. We'll dye the oceans pink. We're going to remake Breaking Bad with an all-female cast. We're going to put tampons on the New World Order flag. Hello and welcome to the Y-Ball Chromo Zone, the only Eldritch Horror YouTube promotional segment exclusively for boys. That's not to say that we exclusively feature men or that we exclusively benefit men because we don't really benefit anybody uh, all fall before the unspeakable might of the eyeball. But I mean a secret third thing. Also, uh, probably I should mention eyeballs on small creators. I, I promote other people's work. Mm. That's the idea. I don't know if I've ever actually explained that out loud in the holy shit four years I've been doing this. Okay. All right. That's cool. Hey, kind of a weird, some might say, derelict of duty choice to make a video about some personal beef nobody cares about in the middle of an ongoing genocide. And yeah, 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 I don't know what to tell you. Sometimes you're knee deep in a project when the world is, just goes absolutely maniacal. And I'm not really sure how useful my voice on the subject might be given my own, mm, uh, let's call it, tendency to default to histrionics and my personal feelings on the subject. Luckily, there are other, more responsible YouTubers to pick up my slack. In Debunking Israeli Ads, The Dark History of War Propaganda, Bridget Empire outlines not only the utterly vile tactics that Zionist propagandists are using to dehumanize Palestinians right now, but goes in depth to demonstrate the lineage of these tactics within other modern genocides. Mm. And if you think any of the words I just said have lacked nuance, then please watch this video and get back to me. Also, consider going to fuck yourself. That's that right there. That's what I'm, I'm talking about. You're just looking for somewhere to throw some cash. Check out the organization. Did they just tell me to masturbate? Is that it? It's just...